All right, so this is the first step in, in playing with air concrete, um, or aerated concrete, or foamed concrete, or any number of names. Um, but the first step is making something that can produce foam. So that's what I've got here. Um, you know, I, I, I did review the ones with some guys online that have done them. I think that they're unnecessarily complicated, frankly. Um, this general system that they use is, you know, two pieces of PVC, one of which they use, they often put into a T, and that's the reservoir one. And 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 even the guy, Honeydew or something like that, um, he uses, he, he does much bigger projects than what I'm planning, and, and he, it seems like since he built the first one, He's built several other uh, tanks in order to hold more fluid so that he could do bigger batches. That's a, you know, that's a reasonable concern, not for me, but for him. And who knows, maybe I want to do big batches someday, I don't know. This stuff, so far I'm not, I haven't gotten great results in the actual concrete, but, um, you know, regardless. So he keeps building these uh, pressurized reservoirs so the system works like his system works like this this airline instead of just coming straight into the gun it they, they go through a T and they go into the chamber so they're actually pressurizing the chamber which means that that chamber a it has to be sealed which means that you can't add to it as you're going you know if you're running low you can't just dump some in you got to stop and take the cap off and refill it and even with the big tank that's the case um, you know, none, even, even the ones that have huge capacities, and he had one that was, you know, I think it looked like a water tank that he was using, it might have been 20 to 50 gallons, something like that, you know, that's a lot, he probably won't ever have to, you know, run, he won't run out there, but it's a big, unnecessary tank, and that tank has to be strong, because it's taking that pressure, it has to be sealed, um, it's, just, it's not a continuous system, so, when I saw that, I, I just it just confused me, and I'm kind of glad he never went into a detailed he went into a detailed thing of the build, but he never really talked about how it actually works. And I'm kind of glad he didn't because I just had to figure it out on my own, and I figured it out simpler. Um, and actually, this is the second version I built. The, the first one was just bigger, and this all this arrangement stuck out the top, so. It was kind of brittle and, um, you know, hard hard to handle. Kind of cumbersome. Not as cumbersome as the ones I see online, but still cumbersome. So I've redone this out of, uh, I've reduced from one and a half to one inch PVC for this one. The ends, end is glued on. I don't know about the nozzle. That's just kind of there for now. I don't know if that's necessary, helpful, hurtful, who knows. Um, down here, I've chosen to just go in through the side it made this all, uh, with the fittings I had, I, it made this all a little bit more compact. I'm very happy with how that came together. Um, you know, none of this is brittle at all, and I've used this angle, so this, this zip tie here, it didn't, I didn't actually have to draw it down at all. It was already down, and it's just securing it there, and now this whole thing is, you know, you could, I wouldn't bounce it around too much, but, you know, it, it, it's fairly durable at this point. Um, so here's how mine works differently. So the big difference is how I get fluid into the machine. And I'm doing it with a Venturi instead of pressurizing it. It just seems so much simpler that way. That's not some brilliant idea I had. I stole that from power washers. In fact, when I was looking for a Venturi valve, um, I went look, I have a couple old power washers that don't work and I was gonna try to take them off there. The one I did find actually came out of, this is a Harbor Freight uh, vacuum pump. It's not really a vacuum pump, it's a, it's a Venturi, so you run high pressure air through it and you get a suction. And you can draw, and it's for, you know, bleeding brake lines or um, air conditioning systems or anything like that. And it does work, um, although I have a vacuum pump now, so I don't need that anymore. And so I, I, this is all that's actually inside the thing, is that piece right there. And normally, normally it is, uh, 
this is the input um, this is the output so this where the suction is and then this is normally just vented inside so I've tapped that and that's the throughput for the air and that's my output now so that's what goes into there so basically I, I, I force high pressure air in through here we go through there's a narrowing section of this and then a widening on the other side um, and that's where the suction comes in per the Venturi effect um, I've added or since my first version I added I didn't have any valve on on the original one I've added this gate valve to it now so I can regulate that flow if I need to I, I don't know that I need to but if I want to I can um, and then basically you're just pushing air into here with soap so at the at the point where we're here it's already combined air and soap at that point and probably begins to start to froth the stuff up a little bit too um, then I what I tried originally I tried just the bio these bio balls which you can get at like a an aquarium shop there for filtration um, and they won't rust or anything like that. I tried just these and I just didn't get a real frothy foam out of it. So what I, I went back to the, uh, the steel wool. It's not steel wool, I wouldn't use steel wool. That's a, that shit will rust. This, I, I, I don't even know what to call it, but it's, they're scrubbing pads, they're real cheap. It's the same stuff he used. And it does seem to do a nice job. And all its purpose in there is to grab the soap. So if you didn't have anything in there, You'd just be shooting soapy water out the end and it would bubble a little bit but you wouldn't get anything like a foam so by adding this in there what you end up creating if you think about like uh just a little children's bubble toy you know the thing you dip in and you just a ring and you blow air through it and it makes a bubble well this makes hundreds of those and it it hold, it creates a little bit of back pressure and it grabs the soap so that you can push air through it and create bubbles or foam, whatever you want to call it. So there still is one bio ball sitting at the bottom here um, just so that the pressure doesn't squeeze this stuff together and plug up the hole. Um, but I think, I think we should be in good shape with it. Now, you know, as you can see, this whole thing, this is the whole thing. There's a connection here. And then this line goes to my soap bath or my soap solution sitting right there you'll notice it's an open container the container does not need to be rigid doesn't need to be anything special because it's being sucked out of there and not pushed through there i think this is a much better system so and if we want to look at the results of it so i can again i can hold this thing really nicely with one hand even though it doesn't look may, may look a little bit gaudy but And then I and that, that's the other thing is that I don't know why nobody's put a fucking trigger on these things. It seems ridiculous. Um, they all have uh, you know quarter turn ball valves on them, and I don't know why. It seems. I mean, I guess if you're doing a huge batch, maybe it would be a pain in the ass to sit here and and stick on the trigger. But for me, the small batches, this this is way better. Look at how this sitting at about about 90 psi. I'm unregulated right now. I may throw a diaphragm valve in there and, and regulate it. But produce, it, it, it produces consistent foam. You know, it's it's the same all the time. This is a little different than the first one. I'm curious to see how it how it works, but. Um, and I, I do want to start playing with, right now I'm using Dawn at, at four ounces per gallon. Um, and I do want to play with this gate valve and see what, you know, let's, let's run it all the way down for a moment. And then back it off. Let's go one turn. Whoa. Sometimes it does that right at the beginning. I don't know what that's about. So that seems a little fluffier. Let's just we'll increase the flow.
I think I'm getting more volume, but I don't think I'm getting, I don't think it's really changing it much, which is kind of what I expected. So you could probably go without that $6 valve. But, um, and then the, the clean out here at the top, I needed one end that wasn't glued, or I mean, it's glued here, but it's, I got to clean out here so that I can clean it out. Um, and in between batches, now I should be able to just take this thing like this, disconnect that, pull the top off. You know, if I want to do different tests, that is, you know, if I want to clean this out and put a different solution in, I can do that a little bit easier. It's shorter. It fits in my sink now. Um, and you just don't need all that stuff. This is all you need, as, as demonstrated there. That's that. Over and out.